नमस्ते लेटेस्ट डिस्कस लैबोरेटरी प्रिपरेशन ऑफ हाइड्रोजन गैस लैबोरेटरी प्रिपरेशन ऑफ हाइड्रोजन गैस सो इन लैबोरेटरी हाइड्रोजन गैस इज बीन प्रिपेयर बाय एक्शन ऑफ डाइल्यूट एसिड ऑन जिंक ग्रैन्यूल्स सो आई हैव रिएक्टेंट लाइक zinc granules and dilute hcl or h2so4 dilute hcl or h2so4 so we can arrange the apparatus as shown in a diagram so we have round bottom flask where we keep a zinc granule then put in two hole cork a thistle funnel is attached and delivery tube is been attached the one end of the delivery tube is been kept in a water drop filled with a jar which contains in water then from the thistle funnel we are pouring a dilute hydrochloric or dilute sulfuric acid so let me have a reaction here zinc metal reacts with dilute hcl in order to give me zncl2 plus h2 gas so to balance this i'll take here 2 hcl if i take sulfuric acid then the reaction will be zinc plus h2so4 dilute will give me zinc sulfate as a salt plus hydrogen gas now so whenever we pour a dilute acid onto zinc metal the reaction takes place and evolves hydrogen gas which passes through this delivery tube and it's been collected by downward displacement of water so generally hydrogen gas is collected by downward displacement of water now the hydrogen gas is practically insoluble in water that's the reason it has been collected by downward displacement of water although it is lighter than air although it is lighter than air but not collected over air by downward displacement of air so here you make it a reason although hydrogen gas is lighter than air but not collected by downward displacement of air it is collected by downward displacement of water so what's your reply it is collected by downward displacement of water first of all it is practically insoluble in water and second suppose if i try to collect over air generally hydrogen gas forms an explosive mixture with air so this is the reason why i am not collecting over air because hydrogen gas forms an explosive mixture with air now in the above experiment we have used granulated zinc we have used granulated zinc now why we use granulated zinc here why not other metals now granulated zinc has been preferred over other metal because this granulated zinc contains copper as an impurity granulated zinc contains copper as an impurity which will act as catalyst as well as it will speed up the rate of reaction it will speed up the rate of reaction that's why i am using granulated zinc over other metal granulated zinc over other metal now why i am not using any other metal so you may get a reason here why this particular metal is not used why zinc is been used so these are the probable reasons which can be stated why i am not using other metals now let us take the very first metal which are present in activity series that is your potassium and sodium so why i am not using potassium and sodium metal now generally it's been seen potassium and sodium metal they react very violently with acid they react very violently with acid the reaction is very violent and rapid evolution of hydrogen gas takes place and also lead to an explosion now i'm not using calcium and magnesium because as compared to sodium potassium they are less reactive but generally they are expensive in nature they are expensive aluminum 
Now, generally, whenever I'm using aluminium with dilute acid, it's been seen that aluminium gets a coating of aluminium oxide on its surface. So, generally, whenever we take aluminium metal, it's been seen that aluminium combines with atmospheric air in order to get an aluminium oxide. So it, there's a chance that you will not get a pure aluminium metal. There will be always oxide coating will be there, which we need to remove that. And then we need to use that metal for the preparation. Iron. This is one of the good options. But generally what happens, iron reacts very slowly at ordinary temperature. So we may require a heating. Then other, in upper case, what we have used with zinc granule and dilute HCl, I don't require a heating because reaction is exothermic and continues on its own. But suppose if I use iron metal, Suppose if I use iron metal, then iron metal reacts very slowly under ordinary temperature. So here you may require a heating element to start the reaction. Apart from that, there are chances that hydrogen gas which we obtain by this process, that's by action of iron with acid, may contain some impurities of hydrogen sulfide and sulfur dioxide. The hydrogen gas obtained by the action of iron metal with dilute acid may contain an impurity of hydrogen sulfide and sulfur dioxide. So, purity of hydrogen will not be that much. Lead. Now, this generally metal scarcely reacts with dilute acid. In our previous video also, we have seen lead metal scarcely react with dilute acid. We do require a hot concentrated acid to carry out this reaction and apart from that it's been seen that there is a formation of insoluble lead chloride or lead sulfate so if i use diluted cl with lead metal i may get a lead chloride which is water insoluble i may get lead sulfate that's also water insoluble so they will form a protective covering they will form a protective layer over the lead metal unreacted lead metal so on account of this, the reaction slowly comes to an stop. The reaction slowly comes to an stop. Now, copper and mercury, this cannot be used because generally copper and mercury, these are the metal which is present below hydrogen in activity series. These are the metal which are present below hydrogen in activity series. So they cannot displace hydrogen from dilute acid. So they cannot displace hydrogen from dilute acid. So these are a few reasons why I am not using all these methods. Why I am using granulated zinc to prepare hydrogen gas in laboratory. Now let us study some precautions which we need to take care while preparing a hydrogen gas in laboratory. Now the very first thing, the apparatus which we are using should be airtight. Now generally in Earlier case only we have seen that it forms an explosive mixture with air. That's the reason I'm not collecting over air. So if the air will be trapped in, there are chances that it may form an explosive mixture. That's why the apparatus which we are using, it should be airtight. Now, whenever we are collecting a hydrogen gas, a care has to be taken. It should not start, we should not start collecting immediately. Let the gas should be collected only after some time when the all air from a delivery tube has been expelled out. When the all air with from the delivery tube has been expelled out, then we start collecting the hydrogen gas. Now generally, in order to prevent escape of hydrogen gas from the reaction chamber, that is your round bottom flask, the end of the thistle funnel, the end of the thistle funnel should be put well inside dilute acid so that we can prevent the escape of a gas from the mouth of thistle funnel. Okay, so we keep the end of the thistle funnel well in, well deep in dilute acid. So this will ensure that the hydrogen gas doesn't get escaped from the mouth of thistle funnel. Okay, now what are the gas jar which you are collecting? What are the gas jar which you use for collecting a hydrogen gas? Should be completely filled with water. There should not be any air bubble left. If you got an air bubble left, chances that it may lead to an explosion. So we take care that whenever we are collecting the hydrogen gas, the gas collecting jar should be completely filled 
with water so as to minimize the chances of getting air bubble in now what is the hydrogen gas which you obtain will have some impurity now to remove that particular impurity we'll look into now but what is the hydrogen gas which has been collected it's been first purified and then dried by passing through fuse calcium chloride or p2o5 they are acting as a drying agent they are acting as drying agent to dry the moisture laden gas because we are collecting over water now what kind of impurities which are present and how we are going to remove those impurity let us check now hydrogen gas which has been obtained by above process may have impurities present in the gas it may be all or it may be some of the impurity will be present but these are the more probable impurities which are present along with hydrogen gas so the first we may have arsine that's ash3 we have ph3 that's called as in phosphine hydrogen sulfide carbon dioxide sulfur dioxide nitrogen dioxide and nitrogen so these are the more probable impurities which are present along with hydrogen so the hydrogen gas which contains this impurities is been first passed through silver nitrate is been first passed through silver nitrate so what silver nitrate does silver nitrate removes the impurities of arsine and phosphine the silver nitrate removes the impurities of arsine and phosphine as a precipitate of silver arsine and silver phosphide okay so they get eliminated then i got the gas which is removed from this arsine and phosphine impurity has been passed with lead nitrate so what lead nitrate will do lead nitrate will remove the hydrogen sulfide remove the hydrogen sulfide impurity then the remaining gas which contains an impurity along with hydrogen is carbon dioxide sulfur dioxide nitrogen dioxide and nitrogen now that particular hydrogen gas which has got an impurity of carbon dioxide sulfur dioxide nitrogen dioxide and nitrogen is passed through potassium hydroxide solution that is caustic potash solution so what this caustic potash will do caustic potash will react with co2 so2 in order to give me k2co3 k2so3 and with no2 it may give me potassium nitrite as a salt potassium nitrite as a salt so i'll remove co2 so2 and no2 by passing through koh solution by passing through koh solution so first i'm using silver nitrate to remove arsine and phosphine second i'm taking lead nitrate to remove hydrogen sulfide third i'm taking potassium hydroxide to remove co2 so2 and no2 now i have left hydrogen gas with an impurity of nitrogen so that hydrogen uh, that hydrogen gas which contains an impurity of nitrogen is passed over heated uh, is passed through palladium foil so what the palladium foil will do palladium will foil will adsorb will adsorb adsorb it's a surface phenomena where accumulation of the gas takes place on the surface so will adsorb the nitrogen and hydrogen has been set free so by this way i can get a pure hydrogen gas so up you can see the hydrogen gas has got probable impurities all those probable impurities have been removed by passing that impure hydrogen gas through silver nitrate lead nitrate potassium hydroxide solution and rest over palladium foil okay i got a pure hydrogen gas so i removed all the impurities and i get pure hydrogen gas by this process now we got a hydrogen gas now how to test that this is a hydrogen gas now what are the tests can be used for hydrogen gas hydrogen is colorless odorless gas apart from that it is neutral to litmus apart from that it is neutral to litmus now whenever hydrogen gas comes in contact with pure oxygen okay so pure hydrogen gas burns in presence of pure oxygen in order to give me corresponding water but this hydrogen gas burns with pale blue flame in presence of oxygen it burns in presence of oxygen with pale blue flame and i get water 
तो आई हैव अ प्योर हाइड्रोजन गैस एच टू प्लस ओ टू यूज मी टू एच टू ओ एज अ वॉटर नाउ इफ आई इंट्रोड्यूस अ बर्निंग स्प्लिंटर इफ आई इंट्रोड्यूस अ बर्निंग स्प्लिंटर इन टू अ गैस जार कंटेनिंग और अ टेस्टिव इवॉल्विंग हाइड्रोजन गैस द बर्निंग स्प्लिंटर गोज ऑफ विथ pop sound the burning splinter goes off with pop sound and the gas starts burning that's your hydrogen so this is about laboratory preparation of hydrogen how we prepare hydrogen gas in laboratory how we collect hydrogen gas how we purify hydrogen gas and how to test hydrogen gas in laboratory thank you for watching